What's up everybody, James Jackson here, back again with another video. If you're new to my channel, I do tips, tricks, news, and reviews for the film and video making industry, so if you do like the content here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you can hit, stay up to date on all the content going forth. So you're probably definitely seeing that this whole situation is a little bit wider than normal, and that is because I am once again using the Irix 15mm T2.6 lens. Um, I'm using this on the Canon C70. I'm also noticing I got I definitely got to build out this uh, basement a little bit more so I can actually try to fully utilize this. But I'm actually enjoying it. I'm glad that it's this way. It's nice and wide. I can still reach uh, to the changes to make all the changes I need while still came, uh, keeping a good distance and getting everything in frame which is something I wasn't talking about with the C200 before. But now that I got the C70, uh, I'm really, really like this. So let's actually go talk about the C70. Let me just say this is not a review of the C70. This is just my first impressions about a couple things with the C70. There's like other things that I'm going to go more into later on. So today I'm going to be just talking about the use of it, ergonomics, and then the latitude or dynamic range and just how I've been work the workflow has been in post for the first couple of presents because I've only had the camera for two days now. But spoiler alert, it's a lot of positively with a couple things that is just a little bit negative. So let's begin. Uh, let's just start off with the ergonomics of it. And I will say this, of all the cameras that I've actually used, you know, that I've used over the years, this has got to be probably one of the easiest cameras I have used in quite a while. Um, the ergonomics and the layout, I love how it feels in the hands, the grip feels fantastic. The button layout is is like perfectly lined up. I love how it's just easy to you, from the grip to turn the camera on. You can access all your buttons relatively easily. I've, I've remapped a few buttons, but just then, just it took me like five minutes and I've already can like assign, like right now I don't even have to look at the buttons. I can know where each one is and I can uh, make a quick adjustments right on the fly. And anything that's really needs to be tweaked, I can even go to the screen, which I gotta say right now, uh, so far from what I've seen, this is a really, really, really good screen. Um, and, I, and the fact that it has quick, easy access only makes it even better. Because now I can just go in, if I need to make adjustments, I can adjust, click on it, tap, make the, make the tweaks that I need, and I'm good to go. Especially the built-in NDs. The fact that with, with every other cinema camera, you had to literally click through uh, the NDs on the button. Which, it's not a big deal, it's just something that does take time. Here, you can actually like start from zero and just automatically hit six. Or if you add the extend mode, you can go up to eight or 10. You can actually just go right to it and you don't have to cycle through your NDs. That right there is already a big improvement compared to uh, the previous uh, versions of the cinema line. And that just, so it's, it's a little bit of thing, but little bit things of time just add up and it just makes things go smoothly. I love the fact that we now can display LUTs. We can turn the LUTs on again. Turn the LUTs on from the camera. I can change my ISO, my white balance. All of that is easily accessible. Speaking of white balance, I have got to say this has got to be the easiest white balance I have ever came across. I literally just need like one of these guys right here, which is like 10 bucks. I got this thing for like 10 bucks off Amazon and literally just put this right in the camera, hit the push auto button, and it balances out like perfectly every single time. Uh, I have yet to come across a camera that hits it on the hit it nail like it does with this uh, with this camera. The Pocket Cinema cameras, um, and even the Ursa Minis, they did a pretty good, decent job, um, but this one is just literally a push of a button, boom, you're done. So big ups to that. I do love that, and then all of a sudden, and then I can just throw this uh, middle gray card up, and I can either check the waveforms uh, that I want to, or I can use false color because false co there is false color in this. So getting your white balance and getting your exposure is really, really, really easily done in this camera. So let's talk now about the image quality. Um, and man, this thing has been 
a joy to work with in terms of image quality. Uh, dynamic range is, I, I'm, I'm really impressed by what I've seen. Um, I'm gonna put up a clip of you guys as I'm talking where I am sitting in a car, uh, basically just sort of doing almost kind of like a vlog style with this 15 millimeter. And you can go, and you can clearly see in the back that we still have details on the seat belts in the back, as well as we're get, we're not blowing out our sky outside in the window, which is not an easy thing to do. My skin is at, my skin is well exposed on the side that is lit, and then you know the shadow side is still got information there. So, the in terms of the dynamic range of that DTO sensor, you really get to see the flexibility of it. Um, the other thing I like about this is the preamps on this camera. Right now I'm using the Rode Video Micro, which is an easy mic uh, microphone that you guys can pick up even somewhere like Best Buy for like 65 bucks. I'm pretty sure right now it's like 55 right now, it's, it's gone down a little bit in price. but. It sounds great. I was. Uh, I, I'm gonna get and play that car video. Check out the sound and how it sounds come uh, to you guys. What's up, everybody? James Jackson here. Uh, I'm getting ready to meet up with a bunch of friend of mine right now. I'm testing the Canon C70 right now. It is uh, doing really cool. I got the 15 millimeter Irix T2.6. And as you can see, something as simple as that. And honestly, it doesn't even take that much volume from the camera. I, I have it like at the second decimal mark. Uh, and so it's still hitting below the zero mark and I'm getting great quality audio sound. Especially with something like this 15 millimeter lens, I can get a lot closer to the lens and meaning the microphone could get closer to me, which means cleaner and better audio. So obviously this microphone is not gonna be used for every single situation, but if you're definitely doing a little bit more vlogging where you're like me, you're talking to the camera with a wide angle lens like this, this really, really makes it the whole process simple and less complex. And speaking of that sensor, I gotta talk about the sensor size because it's the reason why I really am feeling this 15 millimeter lens because I'll be honest with you, when I was using the 15 millimeter on this guy right here, the EOS R5, in the full frame mode, I wasn't honestly really feeling it. I, I felt it was, it made everything stretch a little bit too much to my liking. It felt, um, it felt like it was just too distorted for my liking. Uh, even though it's, it's not really distorted. I, I guess it's like I said, it's more stretched because when you're dealing with a, a lens this wide, look, things are gonna stretch. Like you can see here, my arm is not this long, but you know, in certain situations, especially when you're dealing with a large focal length, it really pulls the image uh, to the sides and makes everything longer. And it's to me, it was a little bit too much on full frame. But when I shot it on, say, my Pocket 6K or even the R5 in the crop mode, I was actually perfectly fine, and both of those and both of those crop modes have roughly the same crop mode, about 1.56. But because of the C70 is a 1.37 times crop, not the 1.56, it's so now I'm getting, I'm still getting that nice wide that gives that sort of like really filling view, field of view. But at the same time, it's not so wide that it's like distracting. It's just wide enough that it works for me. And I really, really love that about this. So to me, the sensor size of this of this particular Super 35 sensor is like, to me, the 15 millimeter is like almost perfect for a, a camera like this. Now let's talk about workflow. And honestly, the workflow is a little bit j jaggy. Even with, say, the All Eye Codex, I did notice that there is a little bit of a hiccup initially. But once you know, I allowed uh, Resolve to render out the clips. It seemed to, it, and it rendered them out relatively easily. So once that happened, I it pretty much was able to handle it, and it was dealing it with no issues. Um, and just in, that was, but that's really the only hiccup I've came across in terms of post production workflow. Color grading, man, this thing is so much fun, and it's. I love the fact that I can push and pull this footage anywhere even with the long got codec i'm still able to push and pull these images as much like right now as you're watching me i'm actually just using the same c-log to red uh, 
look that I had on my C200 on the raw codec. And as you can see, it still looks fantastic. So that's the beauty I love about this. The fact that I now can see C-Log2, I can expose properly to C-Log2. And then now you can, and then get the benefits where I just literally drop my LUT, my, that C-Log2 to, to Airy or the, the red look. Uh, on the camera and I get like almost a damn near good perfect image to my liking again your miles may vary on this So if you haven't uh, got the LUT it is on my digital store, so you could definitely check that out uh, You can download it. It's also it's part of a pack that includes the pocket uh, Ones for the pocket cinema cameras and the 6k which you can then match the Canon LUT to the pocket LUTs So definitely go check the store out it's all, uh, I always leave a link to my store in the description below so you can check that out. But that's it for right now. That's just the first impressions of the Canon C70. Uh, I'm going to be putting out more videos on it. I will definitely be putting out a video in terms of autofocus. That's the next thing I'm going to tackle. But so keep an eye on that. But until next time, thank you guys for watching. Please hit those likes again. The likes definitely help the channel out. If you have more questions regarding the C70, please leave your comments below and I will definitely make sure to get there and answer your questions. And as always, until next time, take care everyone.